It doesn't have to be a verbal request. It just says, you know what, I'm just going to live my life the way that I want to live it. Something else here I see in this verse here, a proud look shows what is in the heart. It's like a no trespassing sign to God. And he will socially distance himself from that person, from that nation, from that city, from that corporation, from us. And once God exits a person's life, once he exits a, a nation because they have uh, seen what God is doing, they have read what God has done in the past, and they decided that we want to live our lives unto ourselves, and we don't want any kind of laws, and we don't want any kind of, any kind of individual telling us that, that we have... That, that we can't do what we want to do. So we find himself exiting nations, churches, families, individuals, Because you see, people will begin to live like they want to. But it will always be a godless existence. I'll be honest with you, that's not worth living. It's really not. Now, I have never lived a godless existence except for that short time when I didn't even know that I was lost. At the very moment when the God's Holy Spirit touched my heart, uh, I knew there was a God. I knew that he had spoken to me. And I knew that he told me, he, he warned me of my eternal separation from him as a nine-year-old child, that there was nothing I could do about except put my faith and my trust in Jesus. And I want you to know this morning, uh, the same rings true today. I'm just looking out at the congregation. And, uh, there's, a, there's a lot of stuff going on while we have been... Uh, socially distancing ourselves. You know, I look back there and uh, wouldn't embarrass him for nothing in the world. Mike Peavy, there was a fella standing back there as tall as his granddad. Yeah, that's it, Mike. There was a fella standing back there as tall as his granddad. Uh, don't want to embarrass you, right? Now. Keep it up, bro. Keep it up. But our kids are growing. Uh, I've seen uh, the other children that came in. Oh, it's enough to make an old preacher cry, and it be for real. That's so good to see them. Good to see those precious children. Oh, my goodness. To see them for the first time setting up. Uh, if I was in a tent revival at this time, I'd say, Hallelujah! <laughs> hey, 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 wait a minute now, hey. I ain't gonna throw no microphone. I'm just saying, how do you do it? <laughs> just a private joke there between the sound man and the preacher. <laughs> but I want you to know there's, there's two things in this short verse that tells us there's some things that we can do that will drastically change your life. Are you ready for this? Just, just one verse in the scripture where God tells us to stay away from that pride thing there. Oh, by the way, is that not why Satan fell from the earth and took a third of the angels with him? That's the reason. That's the reason. I, I will ascend to the Most High. I'll be number one in heaven. And the next thing you know, there's destruction on the earth. And it's been that way ever since then. Satan falling from heaven. But there's two things. This march into hell and destruction can be stopped. There's two things that can stop it. Number one is seek after God. Seek after God. Just between you and me, now you're not sure you want the God that Brother Bobby has, right? He's got a different God, doesn't he? He's got a God that will cause you to preach and hold you to attention. Y'all want that kind of God? <laughs> seek the Lord. Seek after God. Now, he, he will take some individuals 
And, and he will put them in your life that are radically changed and it's not religion, but they have a relationship. But everybody that God has saved, he has given them a purpose and a reason to give out the gospel message and to tell the story as to how God saved them from their sins. Seek after God. Well, now if he's going to do, if he's going to cause me to do some strange things, like read the Bible for myself. I don't know whether I want them or not, Brother Bobby. I just don't have time to read. Well, I think in the times that we live in now, we really need to take the time to seek God. To seek God. In, in our seeking, it, it, it's okay to hold the uh, pastor in, 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 in your little magnifying glass and say, what's this guy doing here? I mean, why is he even talking about revival? We have not even had a Sunday night service. And how long? Speak for yourself. I, I know I have subjected myself to some of the stuff that I've been in, but I've been in some Sunday night services. I've been in some Wednesday night services where we gathered together and did Bible study with people that I know who are lost because they told me they were. Actually, what I'm trying to say is if COVID has kept you out of church, it's your fault. Did, did I say that kind enough? I don't, sound, I, I don't want to sound like an evangelist who's going to move on down the road because we got to live together. We, we got to love one another. But it, it, it's in, at the same time, if you find yourself because you, you've been out of church and you, you, you feel like you're distanced from God, let's see, who can we blame that on? Self, self, self. But God is still working. And, and there's some things that, that I've had an uh, opportunity to experience that I would have never experienced it except these things have fallen out to us the way that they have. Let, let me move on, though. That, that, that thought there, seek after God. You can always find God, and be careful of that word you use as always, because uh, what does that word always mean? Always. Forever and a day. You can always find God in his word and with his people. That's just simple, basic Christianity. You will not feel at home in this world anymore. So says the song, unless you find yourself with a group of radically uh, changed lives because of your relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. As a matter of fact, you will find this out one of these days that when you really get right with God, when you really begin to seek God, your friends will leave you like nobody's distant, not nobody's business, and that's what you call socially distancing themselves from you, and that's what God does. Your friends will do it from you. I'm telling you, you will have the power to scatter 10 farmers in 10 different directions just by speaking the name of Jesus. Well, I got to go. I've got this. I've got that to do deal with. And to be honest with you, it moves on up the chain of command here. Even some pastors are not comfortable with using that name and talking about revival and even suggesting that God had something to do with all these events that are playing out in our churches. Even pastors will disassociate themselves from pastors. But you don't believe like I believe in I don't believe like you believe. But you can always find God in his word and in his people. There has to be a deliberate search though. Especially when we've been away from him so long. There has to be a deliberate search. No matter how busy you are, take the time. Take the time. And remember the important messages. The important messages are when you, when you see what's happening in this world of ours. If you take the, the word of God, you begin to read it. Remember the important messages that God has sent for such a time as this. It was the tribe of Issachar, uh, uh, one of Jacob's sons. I have no idea what else they did, but they were known as men who could discern the time 
and give out good information as to what God was doing. Scriptures tell us that. Seek after God. Second thing is invite God to be a part of your whole thought pattern. Do you hear what I just said? Allow God to be a part of your whole thought pattern. Well, Brother Bobby, there's some things that I think that God wouldn't be welcome there at. Uh, what about getting rid of those things? I mean, it's just a thought, just a suggestion, like John Wayne said in, in, in the movie there about his mom's Bible. There's some places I go in, says John Wayne, that that book is not welcome. Well, have you ever thought about not going in those places? Because of the Word of God. You see? Invite God to control your whole, whole thought pattern. Well, brother, why would you have a verse for that? Well, it goes something like this. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable unto thee, O God. God, others too. But they're just, God isn't in all of the thoughts of the wicked. As a matter of fact, Many times he isn't there at all because right, pride rules there. And I would say this to you as a congregation. Save your best thoughts for the study of God's word. I want to give, give you a thought here as we're coming to a close. Um, because this is the way, as you seek the Lord, as you seek the Lord, or, hey, once you find him for salvation, the that it doesn't end there. It, it does for a lot of church folks. But once you seek the Lord and you find his salvation, then you are to continue to learn about him because the more you learn about God, the more you know he understands about sin and he wants you to get rid of, of your personal sin. He, he wants you to stay out of those errors that, that cause you to fall. And you know how to do it and I know how to do it. Seek the Lord. Invite him to be a part of your whole thought pattern. Because this is how every believer can survive America's perfect storm. I want to read this again. I'm not going to be long on it. I'm going to put it on the screen up there or have it put without having to throw down a microphone. If, uh... Hi. First time I shared this with you, it was right after Michael got here. Not that Michael, but the big wind Michael. Y'all know what I'm talking about. Took, <laughs> took the cotton out of the fields there. So y'all cut him a break there, okay? <laughs> First time I shared this with you was right after. That beautiful crop of 2018 was laying in the field. And it, it reminded me of um, some of the events that were going on at that time of the year. And I wanted to read these to you again. I am not a prophet. And like Tim Warbington says, I am not the son of a prophet. But every once in a while, God will give me a word and I just keep giving it out over and over again. This is the only place I've ever preached this from and I, I, I think I've done it to it. This is gonna make number three. So uh, you, you, you probably got these already memorized. But I want to list them for you. America's perfect storm. And, and, and oh, by the way, I did not find this on the internet. But it's on the internet. Coming from a different pastor. And I have no idea what he says uh, America's perfect storm is. But if, if I listen to him and I begin to see the things that he said and I see that these are the same things that God has given to me that the old dude that don't live on the internet got nothing to do with the internet, gets a copier mixed up with the internet and with the computer and stuff. I'm the only one in the world here that can, in this church here, that can do that. I don't know the lingo there, but I do know this. You spend a little time with Jesus, and it's okay to spend a little time on the internet, but check it out when you leave here. Here's what God has given to me. And when God gives me something, I'm going to hang on to it and preach it every chance I get. America's perfect storm. I'm going to list them for you here. 
as uh, Brian is putting them on the screen, that the continued growth of the national debt. Then I gave you the uh, Proverbs there, 22 verse 7. Y'all see us having a problem with that? I know I do. And the Bible says the borrower is servant for the lender. Look at number two there. Gender confusion. That's all I'm going to say about that. That's enough because there's so many jokes that you can give out and you can share with people who are, are confused as to what they are sexually and, and how they were born. That does not come from God. And I'm telling you right now, it should stop when we see how it is hurting individuals of this day and time and we should stop our jokes about people who are not sure what they are. And realize that's coming because of a failure to put God in their lives and keep him there. That's America's perfect storm. Gender confusion. Another one. Here's another one. Border control issues. Immigration problems. Are any of those being worked on? We, <laughs> oh, oh, let me say it this way. Not by God. Maybe by our nation and, and, and by people who do not even put their trust in God. And all you got to do is get your microphone cut off. To get your microphone cut off is to say the name Jesus. But border control issues, immigration problems, I do not believe the wall is going to keep people from coming over here. What do you think? You know, I, I, I don't want to hear it. I don't want to hear the response. I don't have time for it. It's not going to keep them out, though, is it? You ain't shaking your head like this. No. The breakdown of the biblical view of the family unit. The perfect storm. There is a, such a thing as holy matrimony. Anything else is unholy, says the word of God. Even the thought of it. It's the fastest we need to. We need to get to the altar and repent of sexual thoughts that are not pleasing to God and we need to see what the word of God has to say that family unit is the most important thing in the world that's the reason it's called holy matrimony number five this is one that I hit hot and heavy when, when, when the uh, wind came through when Michael came through natural disasters from God um, he, I'm sure you got a problem with me saying that God sent those. Well, I, I got a problem with you not believing that God can do that and will do that. But we can solve our issues, can't we? We, we really can't. Don't mean we have to pull out weapons and kill one another. It just means let's look at the Bible and see what the Bible has he done it in the past. Sure, he's done it in the past. Will he do it again? Sure, he'll do it again, especially, uh, especially with those nations who have turned their backs on God. Number six. Attacks on Muslim terrorists. Has that stopped yet? I don't think so. As a matter of fact, it has escalated. Now we have our own homegrown American terrorists. The acceptance of sexual immorality. Well, Bobby, everybody's doing it. Not everybody. Number eight, a lack of trust in our political leaders. I'm glad that's improving, aren't you? I said that sarcastically. I apologize. <laughs> we're, we're, we're further apart than we've ever been before. We can't even sit down at the table without throwing barbs at one another. Throwing, or, or, what do you call them? Um, language hand grenades at one another. I'll try to hurt you and you try to hurt me. And let's see how we how we can come together and live in harmony. And it mean, yeah, I meant that's rhyme, but anyhow, it, it's not gonna happen. It's not. Number nine, the failure to hear and obey God's word. I understand. I got people in this congregation this morning. Can't wait to get out. Can't wait to get out. They've heard enough. But if you hadn't heard enough, you can look at Amos chapter 8, verses 11 and 12. Number 10, the murder of unborn children. 
all lives matter. Dr. King's daughter said, from the womb to the tomb, when she's talking about lives, and all, all lives matter. Unsettled racial tension. And turn on the news, see how they're doing there. Change that. This is my nation. See how we're doing there. It's what we're worried about in the world. What we're worried about. The ever increasing crime rate. Need more social workers, less policemen. Said that. Just to be talking. Oh, we need our men and our women in blue. The ever increasing crime rate. The widespread abuse of illegal drugs and prescription medication. Do you know this day and time in our families we got kids popping pills at the mom and daddy game because the mom and daddy's popping pills. I can't live without them, Brother Bible. Well, what's that mean? It means you're addicted to them, right? In a lot of cases, that's, that's what it means. And you know where to get them. In this day and time, I'll just mention this and just move on. There's more children growing up that can say, I've actually smoked pot with my mom and my dad. As a matter of fact, I, I know of an individual in my, in my own history, from my home church, where the daughter would go buy the dope for her mom to smoke. That's a question that needs to be put on a questionnaire, isn't it? Have you ever smoked dope with your child? And there'd be a lot of yes answers. A lot of yes, if you were honest. I say it one more time, the widespread abuse of illegal drugs and prescription, prescription medication. Number 14 on the list, they, uh, I've left room to be added to, a precarious economy. That's where we're headed for. And here's the two things that's gonna save us. Seek the Lord. And allow him to control our thoughts, our pattern of mind, and stuff. That's what we need as a nation. Would you pray with me, please, Father? As we come to the end of this service here, I pray that you've touched our hearts, you've caused us, Lord, to think about where we are at relationally with you. Is it possible for us, Lord, to go another 20 weeks? and to not have any fellowship with you or your people and continue to be the best people that we can be. I don't think it is. I don't. Without you, Father, without your church, the whole system of Christianity falls apart. I understand about the death, burial, and the resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ. I understand that, that we have to believe that, to put our faith and our trust in that. Well, Lord, that's the message that's got to be shared with the world. If we're living like the world, I assure, I, I, I'm assured of this fact here, Lord, we're certainly not going to tell somebody about something we don't possess ourselves, which is salvation. And Lord, touch our hearts. As we watch the news, help us not to be over, overly fraught, too fearful, develop a phobia about even getting out. You realize that you're in control. It's a wonderful thing that you're doing in our lives, Father. Because you're always judging us for your grace and your mercy. And I ask you, Lord Jesus, to touch our hearts right where we're at. Maybe one day we'll be able to come together and have a, uh, just a good old-fashioned altar call. But right now we're socially distancing ourselves from one another. But I'm convinced of this. The Lord, once you've spoken, you don't remove yourself from that individual. You keep on, you keep on pointing that individual in the way that they should go. Help us to beseech you. Help us, Lord, as we turn our thoughts towards you and stay there through these most trying times. Pray this in Jesus' name. Amen.